Hey guys, this video is going to introduce you to gaps. Now, in my introduction to candlestick charts video, I covered what candlesticks look like and the ways you can interpret different candlesticks. Well, in this lesson, we're going to talk about another aspect of candlestick charts, which is gaps. Gaps are little, literal spaces that appear on candlestick charts. Here's an example. So we're looking at a chart of NVIDIA, NVDA, and you see this blue box that I've got highlighted on the chart. We have a literal space in the gap, or sorry, on the chart, which causes a gap in the chart between about 36 and 39. There's no trades there between 36 and 39 from the day of that close to the next day's open. So what happened here? Well, NVIDIA closed around 35 with a range of 35 to 36, but then the next day it opened near 39 and did not trade lower and then closed around 41 for a range of 39 to 41. So because of that, the previous day's high was 36 and the next day's low was 39. This resulted in a $3 gap on the chart between 36 and 39. So how do gaps get created? Well, gaps occur when a stock price opens significantly higher or lower than its previous day's range. The previous day's range is the key here because it's not a gap if the stock is in between the previous day. It has to have space between the chart from one close to the next day's open, like in this example here. Now, there's two basic types of gaps. A gap up, which is in this example, and that's representative of bullish activity in the market and then you have a gap down which will show an example shortly which would be representative of bearish activity in the market now what causes gaps to occur gaps occur when there is a major change in the market's perceived value of a stock outside of normal trading hours so say for example a stock announces amazing earnings after the market is closed for the day the market the next day is probably going to be willing to pay more for that more for that stock than it was on the previous day. Say Tuesday, stock closes at 36 and then Tuesday evening the company announces after the market's closed that they just crushed it last quarter and they expect to do very well for the next quarter. Well now instead of being able to buy that stock at 36, everybody who was selling it at 36 on Tuesday is going to say, well, on Wednesday, I'm not selling for 36, I'm selling for 39 or 40. I want to get a lot more. And the people who weren't buying it at 36 now are going to feel compelled to get in at 39 or 40 because that might be the lowest they can get based on the company's earnings. And again, if we go to NVIDIA, that's exactly what you saw here. This was an earnings related gap higher where the company announced very, very strong earnings, and now the perception of NVIDIA and its value, its share price, changed dramatically overnight. Now the market's willing to pay much more. And the analogy I use is if you buy a house during the day for a certain price, and then that night you discover oil in your backyard, well now your house is going to be worth much more the very next day if you chose to sell it. Now, most importantly, what is the interpretation of a gap? There's many interpretations, but in this we're just going to focus on the basic one. And my first interpretation is that the market is either very optimistic when you get a gap higher, or very pessimistic, pessimistic when you get a gap lower on the near-term value of the stock price. If the market is willing to pay more at Wednesday's open than they were at Tuesday's close, then clearly the market thinks the stock is going higher. Also, you got to think about the sellers. If sellers are trying to get way more at Wednesday's open than they were trying to get at Tuesday's close, then clearly they think that the value has changed. Now, if the market didn't think that way, then why would it pay more on Wednesday than what it paid on Tuesday? And why would people be trying to sell for more on Wednesday than what they were selling for on Tuesday? It's all about perceived value changing in the marketplace. And vice versa in the event of a gap down. When the market gaps a stock down, clearly it's because the market thinks the stock is going lower. Otherwise, why sell it way lower at Wednesday's open than what 
it could have sold for at Tuesday's close. Now what's the bottom line with gaps? Well anytime a stock gaps up either up or down the market is telling you it's either bullish or bearish and this is great for reference point purposes because we can point out the range on a gap day and say hey that range must be an important range moving forward. So if we go back to our NVIDIA example for instance you'll notice that the market never went below the low from the day of this bullish gap higher. So if you're on the sidelines watching NVIDIA and you see this big strong gap what this nice day does is it can you can now say okay the gap low from the day of this gap up was at 39. So as long as it stays above 39 I think the stock's going higher. So you could buy in on this day at 41, 42 ish, put a stop loss underneath 39 and see how high it goes. And as you see with Nvidia, it has just kept on going and kept on going and now it's at 53 bucks. So that gap gives us a great range to reference. We see the opposite effect on a gap down that Starbucks had. Starbucks had a big gap down in late April. Again, this was an earnings related gap down. Earnings usually tend to cause gaps. And you can see we gapped down from about $60.50 down to $59. So now you could bet on Starbucks going down versus the high from the gap down day. Just like we would use the low from the gap up day as a key reference point. Now we would use the high on a gap down day and as you see Starbucks wasn't wasn't ever able to get above 59 and trended down over the next month so gaps very important this is a good basic introduction and now with that we can add another key reference point from candlestick charts so here's the original three reference points from my first video the opening price the closing price the high and the low, the day's range. And now we add our new one, the fourth one. Any open nearby gaps. If the stock gaps up, pay attention to that range from the day of that gap up. Pay attention to was it a gap higher or a gap lower and factor that in to your charting analysis. Please email me, kevin at watchhimtrade.com if you have any questions or comments.